It kind of hit me real hard today. This is day six of 14. I have eight days left with her. I've never trained Moira in public until today, and I'm gonna show you what it's like when I train a dog like Moira in public for the first time. This is Moira, and I'm Zach George. Moira, the German Shepherd dog, is looking for a home, and I've only got two weeks to teach her how to behave so that someone will be willing to adopt her. Okay, we have a situation. And as you can see, it's not going to be easy. She jumps excessively, lunges at almost any distraction. Moira loves to bark, and she definitely pulls on leash and uses her teeth to interact with the world a little too inappropriately. I am feeling a little bit overwhelmed. If that was a dog, she would be like, I'm not paying attention to you. I'm paying attention to that. I will train this dog. Look at this loose leash right now. Shape. Yes. Much better. Yes. Look at me. Is she getting trained? This is reality dog training. The first thing I want to go over today is how I'm using Moira's morning breakfast to continue to refine her training. Let's see how she likes up. Whoa, boy. Okay. We got some training to do. Sit, please. Incompatible with jumping. That's why we ask for sit. Come here. Sit. Good girl. Stay. She now knows stay. Since she's so amped up, I'm gonna work on stay for duration. As long as she holds that sit, she continues to get a treat. When she jumps, the food goes away. It doesn't work for her. I think we need to put her into a down there and we need to hold her there. Do you see how I'm rewarding one after the other here? That's a rapid rate of reinforcement. When you have a dog that's going a million miles an hour like Moira, you really sometimes have to fire them one after the other like that in order to keep them in position. But don't worry, they'll get better with that. This is just how you get traction in a way that keeps your dog enthusiastic and upbeat. And I love that she's offering the down stay right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and give her the rest of her meal now. Some of you may already know this, but all dog food is not the same. I promote solid gold because it's really super premium dog food. I love the ingredient list. And there are so many superfoods in here like oatmeal, ground flaxseed, and pumpkin. And they make some really innovative supplements as well. It's good for their skin and coat. Every one of Solid Gold's products are top notch. All of you can get 30% off select Solid Gold products by going to my special link, solidgoldpet.com slash Zach. I'll have a link below. Someone wants to do some training, I think. Ouch! What? What's this? Good morning. Hello. Get it. Today, I'm hoping to teach Moira how to stay in critically life-saving situations. I'm also hoping to make some progress on her behavior in public, which last time I checked, needed some work. But first, I gotta get some of this energy out. I mean, half the reason dogs act that way is because they haven't had enough exercise. So, good girl. There we go. I like that I have that lead on her. When most dogs are learning to play fetch, they like to play keep away. So this long lead keeps me in relative control of the session. So if she starts to play keep away, I can just reel her in. See how she wasn't interested when I just rolled it? That's my own fault. I gotta spark her interest. I gotta precede that roller with a game of tug. Good, her take is looking great. By take, I mean she grabs it by the rim. Let go. Good. Look at that. Very good, she made an attempt to get it by the rim. Yes, good. Let go. It's all coming together, folks. She's trying to get it by the rim, easier said than done. Good girl. Good, here. Nice return, see how she didn't veer off that time? She's anxious to run to me, presumably, because I'm willing to play tug with her. And she's an addict for tug. Looks like she's found another toy she's interested in. So maybe the Frisbee will have to wait. Let's see. She loves these plush toys. Good, all right. Let go. Uh, uh, uh. Let go. Yes. Good girl, come on. And really, at this point, I'm not gonna be too picky as to what she wants to play fetch with because she's fetching, she's getting rid of that energy. It's gonna make her much easier to train, hopefully. Good, yes, good girl. Let go. Yes. Let go, getting better, but could still use some improvement. Good girl. And I wanna give her a satisfactory amount of tug here so she feels satisfied. Easy. Sit. Easy. 
Sit. Good girl. Stay. And okay, go. So every once in a while, I want to stop and see if I can sneak in some practice on the skill, like sit and stay. But in general, I'm trying to make this fun for her because she's got plenty of school to go through today. Stay. Yes, go. Like how she showed restraint that time and wasn't jumping all over me. That's just looking great. As into this toy as she is, I still want to be sure that I can get her attention on me over the toy. So let me practice that real quick. Here. Wara. Yes, go. Rewarding for the glance. There are several opportunities, even when you're exercising your dog, to lightly practice their training. I mean, these are really the moments where your dog truly gets trained. Good girl, yeah. Let go. Ah, ah, ah. Just trying to zoom in a little bit on let go there. That's all I'm doing, just to try and improve it. Really let her know that letting go for a fraction of a second isn't gonna cut it anymore. I really just want her to leave it alone until I say it's okay or I throw it. Yes. So I'm satisfied that Moira has had enough exercise today. This has been a good training session. The next thing I wanna work on is teaching her how to stay in a potentially life-threatening situation before we go out into the real world, into public with this crazy German Shepherd dog. So we're gonna do our first official training session out in the public where the environment isn't controlled, but I wanna do one last impulse control training exercise that is so important, and that is stay at the front door. I wanna mention safety is number one here. We don't have a fence in our front yard at this house, so I've got her clipped to my belt. Let's see what happens if we were just to open the door. I mean, she walks right out. There is no effort to show restraint. She's like, awesome, I wanna get out there and see what it's all about. That's no good. What if a car was driving by? What if she saw a squirrel running across the road? I mean, you can see how that could turn out very badly for her. So knowing how to stay at the front door is really important. No, Moira, see what I mean? I can't even get the door closed without her trying to go out. I know, I'm anxious to go out there with you too. But I mean, on a side note, I mean, just look how focused she is on the outside. Look at the ears, they're not facing me. They're facing straight ahead. She wants to go out there and see what's going on. I point this out only to make it clear how much environment matters. The outdoors all by itself is a huge distraction to most dogs. For a young, energetic dog like Moira, it's gonna be very difficult for her to focus out there. So I'm hoping by the end of this lesson, I can at least get her to hold a sit stay while I open the door. Let's start small. Let's make it easy. Let me get her attention on me. Let me verify that here. Yes. Good. Give her a nibble of some chicken there. See, just touching it. But see, she already walked. I don't like that. I don't like that she's walking towards the door focusing on that. Yes. Do you see what I did? I just touched the doorknob. That's all I did there. I like that she at least came back and looked at me on that attempt. Sit. Stay. So now I'm gonna let her know, you know, I want you to draw. Oh, she broke her stay immediately. So I need to catch her succeeding. Stay. Here. Yes. Stay. The idea is that she keeps that butt on the ground. The correction here is simply keeping the door closed and withholding the treat. That is all the punishment you need here. I use punishment to mean undesired outcome. I can like jiggle it and she's good, but the second it opens, I'm having a hard time. So let me be real careful here. Yes, good. She got real interested. Did you see that? Here, yes. Good. She's like, what kind of game is this? Stay. Yes, did you see that subtle, subtle glance she gave to me there? I love that. Stay. Here. Okay, good girl. Nice job. Stay. All right, so she's doing well with stay for a period of time. She's staying while I open the door and it's a mild distraction of the outdoor air rushing in. Now let me see if I can do another variation of stay while distracted to really proof this overall skill with her. I'm gonna have her stay and then I'm gonna throw something she really wants, in this case, real chicken out of the front door and we'll see how she does. Stay, stay. Look at me, good. Stay. Here. Stay. Look at me. Yes. And 
and okay, come on, good girl. I'm happy to stop on that note because we have a lot of training today and I don't want to saturate her too early. This is by no means finished. I mean, this is the kind of thing that you do for the next two, three years of your dog's life. Practice 30 seconds at a time of having them sit and stay before going out of the front door. So good job, we're gonna go in public. I'm gonna get her muzzled up just because I wanna be extra careful with her because she's very energetic and quick and better safe than sorry. Okay, so we've got Moira in the car. The crate I have for her isn't big enough, so I'm gonna sit back here with her and make sure she's secured. It's just a short ride. You might notice that we have changed the size of Moira's muzzle. We made it a little bit bigger. We posted a picture on Instagram. And what's the name of that Instagram page? Oh, the Muzzle Up Project, they're awesome. Yeah, the Muzzle Up Project. So basically we realized that we could get by with a bigger muzzle to accomplish the same thing and it would be even less stressful for her. So we went up one size on the muzzle. Yeah, she's into birds immediately. My understanding is that she's had some run-ins with a certain chicken. So we're hoping to avoid any more harm to additional bird life. I mean, because it's kind of a... You know what I mean? No, yeah, people love chickens like they're animals. I know, I mean, you can bond with a chicken, but you can also enjoy eating a chicken. That's the dilemma. Don't yeah, put that I in. Yeah, I mean, you are feeding her. Just giving her a treat there. Conditioning her to be calm in the car. Really getting her comfortable with the muzzle being on her face as she has to move around to try to get the treat as I move it around. See that? Good girl. Good girl. I've got to say that behaving while in the car is not something that we need to work on, I don't think. Looks like we have an incoming call. They can wait. I'm talking to my YouTube audience. So she's doing great in the car. I mean, you can see how she's relaxing. We're driving really slow, no interstates. The second we arrived and we got out of the car, Moira saw a dog. So of course we had to capture that for you guys. Unfortunately, today was not the best day for audio. Some interesting stuff happened and I'm not gonna let a technical difficulty keep me from showing you everything. We haven't even gotten ready for our shoot. There's another dog over here. I'm real curious to see how she does. I, wanted... I think we're far enough away. She's obviously alert. Good girl. Let me see if I can just get a glance from her. I feel like if I call her to come to me, she's too distracted for that too early in our training for that. Hey, we're right here. Yes, good. That was actually not bad. I was able to get her attention off of the dog there, and that's fine. I'm gonna let her look at the dog again. Right now there is a loose leash. So at least at this distance with this particular dog, she's not lunging and pulling. So we've just arrived here and you can see that Moira is already getting pretty excited. We've chosen this spot for a specific reason to do our training because it's not terribly busy right now. There's not a lot of people, there's not a lot of birds. My goal here is just to see how compliant she's going to be in a brand new environment that she's never been to before. Right now it's so dead out here. I really don't think we need the muzzle anymore, but I just wanted to be prepared. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it off. One thing I wanna work on is being able to have her sit for just a hand signal without me having to show her a treat. So come here, girl, sit. Very responsive, yes. So now I'm gonna go ahead and give her the treat. And I'll do this for an extended period of time, the first several months of training, in order to be really consistent. Lie down. Yes, that's good. That's such an improvement. That's very good. So she's doing it with a hand signal. I wanna start off with some push-ups here. That's sit down and up. Here we go, sit, good. Here I do have to lure her on the stand. She doesn't, let me see it, we'll try. Let me give her a fake lure and see how that, that's okay, here, stay, yes. So with sit and lie down, she's showing a lot of promise with hand signals, but with stand, she's very lure dependent still. Just okay, yes, stay, yes, yes, here. Okay, see she's very interested in people. There's someone crossing the road over here. And she's giving him a look, which is fine. But let me practice getting her attention while she's mildly distracted by someone in the distance. Moira. Here, look at me. Yes. Good. Here. Yes. Good. I'm going to do this for a minute. Here. Yes. Here. Yes. And okay. Good. 
And now I'm gonna let her satisfy her curiosity for a minute. I mean, it was only yesterday that we did her very first leash training session. And where did we do it? We did it inside because we wanted to keep it really easy for her. This is a notch up in terms of distractions. Ground sense immediately have her attention. So I'm curious to see how well she does out here. I'm not having the same expectations that I might have at home because I understand the Gulf of Mexico is right here and all of these smells coming off the water must be intriguing to her, the ground sense. But let's see how she does. Okay, it looks like she's getting energetic now. She's starting to pull on the leash quite a bit. But remember, since I only have a little over a week with her, my huge number one goal is to be able to get her attention on me around distractions so that I can easily escort her away. So she can take in those distractions from a distance where she's still able to keep her composure. That's the thing we're working towards with overreactive dogs like this. It seems that Moira is really excited about being in this new place with us right now, and she's behaving quite excitedly. Now, I noticed she's also very focused on that toy on the bench over there. And as you've seen, I've been using toys that she's really into as artificial distractions. My hope is to do that out here in this new place. And my thought was that this toy I brought from home would be a nice, easy distraction for her to practice with. But I think she might love this a little bit more than I anticipated. Stay. It looks like Moira's hard work with that stay is really paying off, so I'm delighted that she's holding her stay with this significant distraction. This is absolutely a prerequisite for teaching your dog to stay around more enticing distractions, which we'll definitely encounter many more of today and in the coming days. It looks like Moira is able to focus a little bit more on me now, so let's take advantage of that and see what we can get out of her. I want to capture as many instances as I can of Moira voluntarily giving me her attention, even if briefly. Doing this one thing can be a game changer for many dogs and their leash training. Acknowledging your dog's willing attention can really accelerate your progress. So we're definitely getting small moments of total compliance out of Moira while she's in public. This is a huge step forward for her. For good measure, since she's doing really well right now, let's try some of the things that she's only just learned. How about shake? Yes! Shake! Love it! The day is still early and she's doing great here, but I want to give her a little bit of a break while we cruise on over to a little bit more of a challenging environment to see if we can replicate some of this success in a slightly harder place. This is City Park in New Orleans. We've come to a pretty secluded part of the park, but there's still definitely more traffic here than the environment we just came from. I'm really trying to be as scientific as possible and change as few variables as possible to hopefully help Moira succeed, but I may have gotten in over my head here. And immediately we're presented with a dog in the distance. They're nice and far away, so hopefully Moira will pay attention here. Come, let's go. Come okay, that's not working. This really gives you an idea as to how sensitive Moira is to other dogs. I mean, that dog is very far away and Moira is already over threshold. Before this gets any worse, I'm gonna help her out by moving her farther away from the dog. And this is good. She doesn't need much coaxing to come along with me when the dog is that far away. That's definitely a plus since we have a lot to work on here. And here's another dog already that has walked into Moira's detection zone. And it's more of the same. She's definitely not willing to voluntarily give me her attention if she can see a dog at all. Even when I call Moira's name and I ask her to sit, she's completely non-compliant. I'm sure she just wants to play, but nonetheless, every family would prefer to have their dog behave a little more civilized. Now that those dogs have cleared out, Moira seems a little more open to communication right now, so let's try a quick training session. Notice I'm back to using the lure here just to make it easier, since this environment is clearly much harder for her. Training sessions like this are something you can do when your dog is in those calmer moments when you're desensitizing them. Remember, training your dog to get over issues like overreactivity like this is not a linear process. It takes time, and sometimes you'll have good results, and other times you'll have setbacks. You just have to recover and keep practicing. Now that Moira's been here for quite a while, she's showing signs of being much more able to comply and focus on me. So let's see if we can get a little bit of leash walking success while we have her attention, because we definitely need a lot of practice on that. As you can see, she's still not perfect. She's still teetering between reacting to things all around her and paying attention to me. But I am starting to see an increased rate of success. This is just the reality of training a dog. You can't get too bogged down here when you're struggling. Just focus on noticing any moments of success and you'll start to see more and more over time if you stay the course. 
So moving forward, I have to focus on giving Moira as much exposure as I can to help Moira learn to control herself around the huge variety of distractions in her environment. It's not reasonable to expect her to instantly have total pure focus on me at this point in her training, but I am getting sparks and that is definitely a sign that we're on the right track. Once she's seen more of the world and things like this start to become more normal to her, it'll be a lot easier for her to resist overreacting in only the way that Moira does. The thing about Moira is when she's on and focused, she is on. But, oh shoot, here comes another dog. That didn't last very long. So essentially here, I'm letting Moira look at the dog and satisfy her curiosity, but then I'm also asking her for super brief glances at me too, and then letting her go right back to looking at the dog. Practicing with your dog like this around things that distract them can be very powerful. All right, dog is now. Goodness, holy cow. I mean, she almost got away there because she was acting calm, and then look at this. Moira decides to lunge all out at this dog, so clearly this was asking a little bit too much of her. In hindsight, we probably should have been working a little bit farther away from this dog. Knowing your dog's working distance from distractions is powerful. So Moira's first public outing was definitely a mixed bag. We obviously still have a lot to work on in order to get her to behave more ideally in these situations. I guess she's pretty tired from training. I hope she doesn't sleep too much, though. We gotta take your muzzle off. We gotta take it off. Okay, muscle off. So not a bad day of training with her. She's doing all right. It's getting late now. I want to give Moira some exercise because it is a big night. It is her first night, hopefully, of sleeping all alone by herself in her new area. But we'll see how she does. Hold on. Well, let's practice stay here. Look at this. You can't just be running out of there. Sit here. Stay. No, sit. Okay, good girl. So there we go. So we're gonna start practicing more of that now that she knows that concept, huge. You can see it's pretty dark right now, but she needs to play. So I'm gonna grab a toy and we're gonna play. And I mean, that's the thing when you're putting your dog through boot camp, you gotta get out here and work with them in the morning, in the evening, if you just, Put in your time here and do this right. It'll yield you dividends in the future. Oh gosh, she was doing so well. All right, so I'm gonna give her her food. She looks really comfortable in here. And I mean, this is like a hotel compared to a crate. So I see why she must prefer it. Remember this dog proofed walk-in closet is our crate alternative that we're testing for Moira since she's been extremely anxious when confined in the crate. As she gets in her crate, are you serious? Okay, why not? We'll go ahead and feed her in the crate. And I'm gonna make my way out and we'll check on her. I do expect maybe she might be a little antsy. It looks like she's finished eating and she's getting a little antsy as anticipated, but she's now taken a couple of naps in there. So I'm thinking that she will eventually settle. I mean, she's got some anxiety, but it's nothing compared to the anxiety she had on the second night she was here, so. Oh boy, she's discovered the camera. My goodness. All right, still intact. We'll give her a minute and see how she does. <gasps> oh no. It's a new bed. I've been told she doesn't chew up her bed, so I'm gonna get in there and interrupt her if she tries that again. Yes, Moira, relax. I did. Can you relax? Good girl. She kind of, she seems to be making the connection that I'm trying to communicate something to her, doesn't she? Mm -hmm. Smart girl. Maybe I'll give her like a chew to chew on too. And so I'm gonna give her something to chew on as well. She likes to do that. Good girl. Good girl. It's been a huge priority of mine to get her comfortable with being all alone because I've explained to you how important that is for a dog. I mean, we can't tend to them every second and it's important that they 
are comfortable with just being alone. I mean, for the last five nights, she's been sleeping with me out here. It was literally the only thing that seemed to reduce her anxiety. So if I can get a good night's sleep out of her tonight, I will be so happy. So it just goes to show you, not every dog can be taught to love a crate. You have to be able to brainstorm and be flexible when a dog is saying, hey, that's not something I'm cool with. Today really had its ups and downs. It kind of hit me real hard today. This is day six of 14. I have eight days left with her. And so I really know that I have to keep my expectations realistic. There's only so much a dog can learn over the next eight days. But I also want to see some significant progress out of her. But like what I saw today at the park, when she saw a dog, she was just like very difficult to communicate with, to say the least. And I mean, I know from experience that when you're dealing with dog reactivity, that's something that is not resolved in two weeks at all. But I'm also really encouraged too, because she's really picking up her basics really quickly. Her fetch is the biggest wild card of all. She's doing exceptional with fetch so far. So I'm gonna try and keep that going. That will open up a lot of doors because it means I have a strong currency. It means that I'm able to get her energy out of her reliably before training sessions. So that should make her more prone to absorb new concepts a little bit easier. That's one way to hit the fast forward button on your training program exercise. I want to see how she's doing. I, she hasn't been making any noise. Oh my gosh. It's working. She's sleeping in her bed. Do you see that? She's going to sleep. This feels like a huge victory to me because anxiety is such a tough thing to work through with some dogs and that does not look like an anxious dog at the moment. So very happy. I'm still going to sleep out here so I can quickly get to her if I do think that she's stressing or whatever. I just want to be really close by. We'll see. I'll let you know if anything changes. Good morning. I am pleased to announce that Moira did fantastic. Absolutely wonderful all night. Slept through the entire night. So I'm hoping that will stick and that puts my mind at ease a little bit more because it is so important for her just to be comfortable in her own skin and when a person isn't around. So today is going to be another huge day of training. Hopefully we can make some progress on her other issues as well, but I think I'm gonna go get ready and then we're gonna go get started. Get 30% off of select Solid Gold products by going to my special link in the description, solidgoldpet.com slash Zach. If you're enjoying these videos, subscribe to my channel. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok, and get both of my books too. I'll have all the links below. We'll see you in episode six.